You know, when you talk about the Wu Tang, and this really went on in the book a lot, where, like, for example, even on the first album cover, not all the members showed up, which is why you guys are wearing masks, because not all the members are there. Rehearsals, who knows who's going to show up? You know, meetings, studio sessions, people might show up an hour late, might show up seven hours late, and so forth. Um, you know, you mentioned how the the album you came out with, uh, Shaolin versus Wu Tang, uh, was sort of a a side effect of your frustration with yeah. what was happening. Absolutely, you know, with with the group, basically saying like, "Yo, I'm I'm almost separating myself somewhat." You know, what I mean, by putting a title out like that, it's a device. It's a divisive title, right? You know what I'm saying? And and I remember you even said like, "Divine" was a big part of the problem. You said in the book, you said he has a heart of gold, but was a piece of shit at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It's like he knew how to play both sides of the fence very well. You know, um, like I said, um, when you sit back and you think of this organization, it's really like dealing with five families. You know, um, everybody's not going to agree. Everybody's not going to be on the same page no more. Because at one point we were. But then after a while... Like I said, too many things that are small things that become problems. Now it's too many of them. So you have to say to yourself, you got to take some kind of responsibility, but at the same time, you got to go where the problem is at too. And a lot of times the problem became with this guy. You know what I mean? With how he was dealing with certain things or how he, him and RZA being brothers, how the clan is feeling like at some point, yo, hold up. That's his brother though. You know what I mean? Like, good dude though. But do are they are they are they trying to one for you, one for me, two for you, one, two for me shit? You know, you start thinking all that shit. Because remember, we we from the streets. So it's like we are going to question things. But yeah, but like I said. You can't tell us that, yo, you're going to fix something on the album and the next thing you know, it don't get fixed. And then on top of it, dudes don't like what they're hearing, but they still doing it. You still doing it, but you don't like it. So in a way for them, I guess they felt like it's not that bad because you're still doing it. But in all reality, we going off of, yo, you're going to fix it like you said, right? You're going, you're going to hold your word. And... um. Yeah, that album, we we was we was fucking pissed with it. A lot of us. Majority of us was like, yo, this shit is an ugly baby right here, B. Like, <laughs> it's an ugly baby, my nigga. But yo, that's our baby. We love him to death, but that's an ugly one. You know, but um, yeah, man, you know what I mean? It just got to the point where I was, you know, me being the chef, being vocal, wanting to sprinkle as much as I could sprinkle to help facilitate the whole family because I, I don't know. I guess I'm just, I'm a real team player, my nigga. So that's how I felt. I always want all of us to win and shine together. But I'm telling Raw, like, yo, look at your men. You know what I mean? They ain't feeling good. Me and him would have a lot of arguments behind this and to the point where I become a threat. I become that John Gotti figure talking to Paul now. And really not really liking Paul, but I still respect Paul. You good where I'm going with it? Yeah. Rest in peace, Gotti and Paul. You know what I mean? Whatever it is, it is what it is. But all I'm just trying to make a point to you that me and Rizzo had a lot of turbulence because I was speaking for the family, but the spent the family wasn't really letting Rizzo know what he what they felt. So um it just got me to the point where it's like we can't come out with another album that ain't gonna hit. Because it don't have our sound. So guess what? I'm going to go do one on my own. Because I was in my bag at that time. I was feeling a little, you know, not appreciated as a as an acting member of this family when it came to being creative musically. I didn't feel like I was being respected as a boss. So I decided to make one on my own. I decided to walk away from... Wu Tang Clan to a degree, like y'all ain't even Wu no more. I'm from just some just a just a Shaolin nigga right now. Now I remind you, it was a, a movie called Shaolin vs Wu Tang. 
Same situations happen. Same situations in his own little way. You got to look at the movie to see that, yo, we are living in that same world, but just in a musical world. Confrontations. Loyalty ain't, ain't capital letters no more. Understandings is not being understood. The music is not making everybody feel like they want to go in because you're not inspired and you're not saying you're not inspired. Somebody has to say something. I'll take that. Yeah.